Hey guys, welcome back to Ants Midwest. It's been a long time since I've uploaded a video, uh, over six months, and there's been a lot of changes in that time. I've neglected a few colonies, unfortunately, um, but I also have some colonies that are still doing amazing. So I'm excited to start uploading again, share all that with you, and it's, it's going to be a good ride. For starters, I'm going to show you my Aphenogaster tennesiensis. This is the colony I last uploaded about, and that was when they were escaping their setup and moving into this right behind me. I ultimately decided to move them into there, so let me go ahead and show you the process and what's all taking place. But before we get into all of that, let's recap a little bit. You can see how many ants were escaping. I mean, they were everywhere. You can even tell that there's very little ants in the nest now, and they're just all over the place, on my shelves, on the floor, and then even all the way on the other side of the room. I mean, look at this. This is how far they traveled in, I think it was three days. They traveled all the way over here, and were already starting to move into the nest, as you'll see in a second. Immediately, you can tell they've been digging a lot. In just a few days, they got all this soil moved on top of the leaf, and they even dug a chamber with larva in it. At this point, the move was inevitable, so here we go. Unfortunately, I never took a lot of footage of the ants in this nest in their early days, but as you can see, there's some nice green grass, pile of rocks here, and here's their first meal, which is probably, I guess, the coolest part in their early days. <laughs> I thought that was funny, they kind of threw it off the log. And here you can see a millipede working through the area, which is one of my favorite parts of this nest is the bioactivity, which I'll show you a little more of in a bit. They eventually dragged it all the way to this side of the nest under this log where they took it to break up more and feed to the young. Alright guys, so we are back to present time. And you may be able to notice right away that this looks quite a bit different. The grass completely gone. There's no more green in here, which is kind of sad, but it's also provided a lot of food for rolls. Uh, let me see if I can find one quick. Here you can see there's some babies. Uh, so there is a reproducing population of roly-polies in this setup. As you can see there is an adult. I love the design on these. They're very, very pretty. Um, it's hard to tell over camera. There's even a little green tint to it. I can go almost anywhere on the nest and find these roly-polies up against the glass, babies and adults. I've even seen other life such as snails and springtails. Uh, there used to be a lot of springtails in here, but they seem to have kind of died off. I still see some here and there. And then of course millipedes. You may have already noticed, but the ants are quite active at all times of the day. I've actually just fed them fruit flies too, so you can see that they've been hunting. And you can see a fruit fly running there, trying to get away. I think one of the coolest things is how they've put so much dirt in between the rocks. This pile of rocks was once on top of the soil, but they have moved soil to almost cover the whole pile. Unfortunately, they no longer nest right up against the glass. But, as you can see here, there's a pretty big group of ants hanging out there. Every now and then, I will see them have pupa in this area. Um, I think that helps to dry them out to get them ready to close into adult workers. The ants still enjoy their sugar water very much, and tend to 
usually bury the entrance after long enough. That way, they're able to go directly from the nest right into the sugar water tube. They have, ever since day one, been nesting underneath this stick. I also guess that they nest in or under this a little bit, but for the vast majority of the time, they nest here. This is where they bring all of their food, right down into that hole there. I find it quite fascinating how inconspicuous their nest entrance is. If you were walking through the woods, you would never know that their entrance was right there. So overall, when the ants first were escaping, <laughs> it was a pretty stressful situation. You know, I was pretty upset that I wasn't going to be able to see into their nest anymore, watch the queen, watch brood development. But after having them in this nest for just a little bit of time, I, I fell in love with it. And I really love the natural setup. Um, I don't know what it is. Of, of course, I wish I could still see into the nest and take a gander at that beautiful queen. But just seeing their natural behavior, seeing how they interact with other organisms such as roly-polies and millipedes and springtails. I've seen snails. Just it's it's a beautiful sight to see. And it's just it's so much fun to see their natural behavior and to watch how this small habitat has changed over time. And this used to be a very luscious green patch here, and I had plants around here too, but those have since died. I'm not sure if those died because of my watering habits or if the ants may have killed them off. Not exactly sure. Possibly they just didn't root well enough. Um, but you know what's really great about this setup? is it's so customizable. I can still customize it to this day. I can remove items and I can add items. So what I'd really like to know is do you guys have any suggestions for this? Uh, plants that I can put in here, other decorations, do you think I should remove anything or add anything or do anything different at all? Um, I'd love to hear your recommendations and you know, kind of make you guys a part of this whole setup because I'm in love with it, and you should be too. Well guys, that's gonna be it for this video. <laughs> Still wearing this. If you're ever curious, this is what I use to look at my ants with. It frees up both hands, and it's pretty great for recording, so a headlamp is a great idea. And also, has red light, so you can look at your queens in the dark and not scare them. So, this is actually a good tool. Kind of recommend it. Um, anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, I know there's so much more I could show you and share with you and believe me there's gonna be a lot more to show you about this setup and of other setups that are over there more updates some a little bit sad some pretty good so I'm really excited to continue this journey I'm glad that I'm back in it and hopefully I'm in it for good so thank you guys so much for watching please like and subscribe and have a good one I'll see you in the next one